With that, I leave you with Frank Kelly, who's someone we all very much admire. Thanks very much. <laughs> yes, good morning, everyone. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, I, I love coming to the IEX. It's, it's, it's a, the whole idea of exchanging ideas and, and innovations and, uh, and putting ideas out there. It's sort of what I like to do. Uh, presented at several of them. Um, and so that's sort of what I'm trying to do here. What kind of interests me, and this is the survey experience track, you know, there, there isn't a lot of uh, presentations at this conference really about the marketing activation area or, or really about media targeting and such. It's, it's much more about research, and I think this is a, a fast evolving field that um, as researchers we need to get more involved with. And uh, so I have sort of, uh, you know, first I'm gonna give a little background on, on what I'm trying to do and uh, show you some of the attempts I've done to try and find some new ways to perhaps uh, improve upon uh, ways to use research in the, uh, in the uh, media cross-marketing area. Uh, let's see pushing the green arrow, which I think should be it. Yeah, that's the green arrow. Uh, um, can you, oh, there we go. Um, <clears throat> so as a definition, if you're not familiar with the term cross-marketing, it really is, you know, seamlessly interchangeably using multiple channels to market, sell, and interact with customers. So it's a way to do, and to leverage big data, but in a research context. Uh, this thing's called cross-channel, which is the, the latest issue of late, of trying to follow people across different devices, whether it be cookies or device IDs, um, different platforms in which they, they might be interacting with. Uh, I'm trying to introduce today cross-research, which is a tech term I just made up. Um, and, uh, and see, if, see if maybe it sticks. Uh, is there a place I'm supposed to point it? Of course, I had to use builds, too. <laughs> um, so we're all part of the marketing research world, right? And uh, that's a... Uh, could you just advance it through to the end of this slide? Um, <clears throat> so the market research world is about a $20 billion industry here in the US. It's evolved over, what, about 80 years since it was first introduced. We look at digital marketing here. It's really already been around about 20 years and is now already three times bigger than our industry. Um, and yet, you know, there really isn't much of a bridge between these two. There's, there's several more builds. If you could. Um, there we are. So um, <clears throat> what's changed in the last several years is programmatic ad buying has come along. And uh, the rise of all these data management platforms have created new ways in which to target and evaluate media. And really what I see is that the marketing research world hasn't really ventured too far out onto that bridge. For historical reasons, they, you know, there have been reasons why we've been sort of a step removed from actual advertising because we, we wanted to be perceived as you know, independent and pure researchers. But in the meanwhile, the, the digital advertising area has really embraced a lot of ways to make their ad buys and their targeting and, uh, more efficient. And those areas are, are more marketing effectiveness. They're not really research. And I think there's some places in there where we could add some value to maybe make those um, uh, those decisions a little better through, through the research that we can uh, offer. So, so what are we talking about? Um, the stuff that we tend to be involved in is more around segmentation of consumers. Um, so creating custom targets of target, target buyers, uh, pushing those into media placement, uh, and, and there's different techniques involved to make those uh, apply within a programmatic ad buying world. I'll talk about that a little bit. Evaluating the ad distribution, and then ultimately the feedback loop of understanding the campaign lift. And all of this across multiple distribution points, such as you know, digital media, whether it be PC versus uh, any kind of uh, mobile device, uh, television, and various types of direct marketing. So, you know, in, in in perspective, in a very short time, even 10 years ago, but most of the advertising was still being bought and sold based on age, gender, um, 
And today, you know, that's changed dramatically. So, you know, you look at the age and gender of a particular target audience, at the age and gender of a TV show, you, you match them up. Now, you know, that moved on to cookie targeting a dozen years or so ago. That became the, sort of the primary way of doing things. And now, of course, it's much more complex in this omni-channel, cross-channel world where you have to use combinations of device IDs and try and follow people around in order to market to them. Um, and so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Some of the things that have come along to help in that are data management platforms, which are essentially these huge catalogs of, of groups of buyers. So all these different companies make a business out of accumulating different purchase data or other types of uh, exposure data or whatever it might be, people that have a, expressed an interest in a particular product area. Those data management platforms, and a lot of it is, is segmented data as well, uh, using segmentation models. Um, that data is available to help um, uh, create a marketing plan, a media plan. And then the digital targeting, of course, uh, the primary way is, is modeled, so-called look-alike modeling. You take a small sample, whether it be from a survey or from some other purchase data or someplace, and you find look-alikes in these data management pro programs, uh, platforms. And, uh, and that's where a lot of what's being done today, that, that's the process a lot of companies are using. The question I have as a researcher is, I don't know anything about these models. Maybe I should. I don't know that any of us, I, I haven't talked to anybody in the research world that could tell me are these models any good? Are they good, bad, and different? When I talk to some of the people in the digital advertising world, they say, yeah, well, some are good and some are bad. But I'm not sure that the end buyers of, of this research uh, really have any idea if, if they're using good models to help target their media or not. They're just using what's available. And this is an area where I think we, you know, again, as, a, as an industry, should be, should be much more involved. Uh, what I'm playing around with here it, today is, is direct identification. So finding ways to identify specific targets that maybe you can go and find behavioral data um, that, that helps you find some good prospects for your, for your product. So what I did is I took, you know, we're a panel company. I took my US database of about, uh, about half a million active panelists. I looked at the, literally about 1,000 profile variables, um, which in this terms of big data is not that big, but for us, you know, half a billion data points uh, is a lot to work with. Um, but I took this with the idea that maybe I could find some relationships in there among these different target groups. Essentially, the reason we have 1,000 variables is we ask a lot of questions to profile our audience so that uh, we can use that for targeting surveys. You know, we're an online access panel business, and that's, that's the way that business works. So we have a lot of data that explains a lot of things about people, things that people are often interested in uh, as targets. But we, never, we usually look at that one at a time. We look at it, if you're, if you're a client and you come to us and you want Verizon mobile phone users, you know, we can find them for you. Here, uh, the idea was if I could put them all into a big data cube and, and, and play around, I might find a lot more about certain target audiences that I, that I knew before, rather than just age and sex demos. So for example, this is just an example of some of the classifications of, of profile data that we have beyond demographic and household, stuff like travel and, and employment in, in, information, information on health and automotive, the car, car people drive, if they're interested in buying a new car, a lot of stuff on activities and technology and, and what kind of credit cards they have and uh, all of these types of um, topics. So then what I did here is I said, all right, let's, let's find some ways to see if I can enhance uh, my knowledge about certain consumers. So some my basic profile data, I'm looking at, for example, people that consume wine on a regular basis, I think it was weekly, uh, about 27% of the general population. People that own an e-reader, about 10% of the population in our database. If I'm interested in, <clears throat> in potentially advertising to either e-reader owners or potential new ones or potentially wine consumers, uh, I found it interesting that 37% of e-readers are regular wine consumers. So it's just a simple example of finding something I wouldn't have known in the profile data that might lead me down the path of finding a, a good way to target an audience. So then I take it a bit a step further, and that is um, take a couple of targets like business travelers. So you, most of you probably fit this group, but. This is actually a surprisingly small group of people in the U.S. Only about 3% of the U.S. population travel specifically for business, make three or more domestic flights a year. Um, 
Similarly, down here, bourbon drinkers. Everybody, a lot of you probably drink bourbon. I don't know. Uh, it's a popular drink these days. But about 6% of the population drink bourbon uh, in the last month, I think the question was asked, that had a bourbon. So interestingly, though, if I cross those two, business travels to drink bourbon, I find three times as many business travelers drink bourbon as the general population. And I said, well, so what's the point of all that? It's interesting, but what do I do with it? Well, the point is that I can go into one of these data management platforms and find somebody that's probably modeled as a business traveler. Um, but I could also go in there and get some really good behavioral data. There's a lot of purchase data that sits in these DMPs, these data management platforms, that, that sit in there on things like buy, people that have bought bourbon in the last six months. They get it from loyalty card data in various places. That data is accumulated and rolled into these, into these platforms. And my preference is I'd rather, if, if I know that business travels that's three times more likely to drink bourbon than the average, then I think that's probably a pretty good audience for me to explore if I'm trying to advertise a, a business uh, travel to, to business travelers. So I might uh, pick that group to look at and, and buy it through the DMPs, which I'll explain a little bit more in a minute. Similarly, uh, e-cigarette users, uh, only about 8% of the population, uh, but about 24% of e-cigarette users are also business travelers. I guess it's convenient when you're traveling. Uh, so again, another potentially good audience to look at. Um, <clears throat> if you take another example, contactless card uh, users. So that's like uh, Apple iPay or like when you use your app at Starbucks and those types of things uh, to make payments. Only about 2.5% of the population. How do I find out more about them? I look across my database and I say, well, let's take a look at some of the shoppers that we have profiled, shopper, people that shop at different retailers. And um, interestingly, Walmart came in about average, an, an index of 98. Uh, and uh, people that don't drink is another profile variable that don't drink at all, only at about 64. Why is that important? I don't know if it's an age or whatever is driving that. There's probably some underlying demographics on all these things. but. Uh, much like the direct marketers, I don't really care. I really just care, does it help me improve the efficiency of, of, of finding my target? Uh, but I can see here, like Whole Foods, for example, I'm twice as likely uh, among the Whole Foods shoppers to find people that use this, these types of cards. So again, if I'm trying to target a marketplace of trying to do some advertising for a, one of these cards, uh, I might buy a list of, of known people that, people that are known to shop at Whole Foods, for example and push that in rather than a segmentation-based approach. Or Trader, Trader Joe's might be another choice here. So really what I'm after is the idea that there's all this profile data out there that sits within the research panels that can be useful to find out a lot more about people than just the very specific questions we either ask in a survey or uh, the stuff that we can, and we do regularly, we push survey data out to these platforms for clients that want to look at Experian data or Personics or uh, Axiom data or uh, various other geodemographic systems and other segmentation systems. That's, that's, that works fine. Um, I'm thinking that maybe there are other ways. In, in that previous example, if I wanted to reach 20 million people and I go into these data management platforms, here's these just examples of a few, there are dozens of them literally. Um, and you can sign up to these and just look at their catalogs of, of different offers that they have. I looked at this one, there was one that had about three million bourbon drinkers, uh, bourbon consumers, people that had bought bourbon. You know, that might have been a good, and, and it cost about $2 a thousand. That might be a good option. Uh, similarly, there was, there was options to buy e-reader users, e-cigarette consumers. These types of consumers are in there in, in these data management platforms, and I know that my particular target audience might have an elevated interest in those areas. So that it's sort of a very different way of looking at potentially marketing and advertising you, uh, to your consumers. So there's that approach, which is the approach I just mentioned. There's also the lookalike modeling approach, which is uh, done from survey data typically or other types of data. And those, those types of uh, models, they essentially find the cookies, the whatever many people you want, 10, 20, 30 million people that you want in the uh, in the data management platforms, and then they push them over to a demand side platform where you actually buy the media, such as AppNexus. So that's just some examples of some of the other stuff that in one of the uh, data management platforms, uh, you can see the laundry list of, of different targets that are available in there. Um, and I know this is kind of probably a different field for many of you to hear about because we don't even talk the same language 
often uh, that, uh, that the digital marketing people talk, and that's why um, some of the stuff is, uh, it's important, I think, if we're gonna understand how to apply our capabilities into this industry, then we have to start to learn their language. So some of the predictions, uh, well, modest predictions, but I believe that this new term, cross-research, has some potential. Um, I think that, uh, I, I would look at it, if you're going into like a bazaar, uh, you know, a food bazaar, it's nice to have a list of the things that you know your kids want, like to eat, for example. So if you go in to buy into these, literally, I think of it like a bazaar, all these different places where you can buy audiences on these data management platforms, and you have a sense of different habits and practices and, and a much broader knowledge of your target audience than just the, the stuff that we typically look at, uh, then I think you have a much better chance of being able to find little nuggets in there and bargain prices of different target audiences that you may want to grab and, and activate and, and try. So most of this field that I'm dabbling in, uh, and this is, again, the innovative idea area, is, is outside of marketing research, but it's an, it's an area that we need to get more involved in because I think, well, we've seen it already come from nowhere to be three times the size of our industry just in this country, uh, and it's gonna continue to grow. And um, I think that uh, they've grown uh, without much guidance from research because they were going too fast, and I don't think our techniques kept up with some of the, the changes that went on in, that, in, in, the, in this industry. Um, but I think there's a chance for us to do that now. So, I think it's gonna be a great, industry, a great market for us going forward. Thank you. We're done. Okay. Do we have any questions for Frank? I'm just happy, uh, Joel, can we get the microphone over to Joel, please? I'm just happy to see that we're talking about cross-marketing and something besides Thanks. beer nuts and beer. That's a huge evolution. <laughs> well, you can cross-market those things too. Uh, hi, Frank, question for you. Um, so how many people on the panel do you have uh, integrated profiles on where you, you know, you've connected their smartphones to their computers, that type of thing? Uh, so. We, we, we have, um, actually, in, in, our, in our panel, we don't actually do that. We don't necessarily try and tie together the cookies, um, per se. Um, we have, obviously, cookie tracking. We have our own cookie we put on all the panelists. And then we provide that over to the data, data management platforms that can then match that cookie and then extrapolate to all the other different ways that they connect with that consumer. So, so, so the to, other it's people up to do the that DMP part. to have the integrated profiles. Yeah, that's and, a very complicated process that yeah. we're okay. not really in a position to do, but they can do it well, okay. um, and, they, and we can give them the raw material to do that. Uh, do we have questions? another question for Frank? Okay, uh, I'd like to just invite everybody to uh, look for Frank later on by the coffee or the beer or out in the hallways by the exhibitors. Um, he's full of all kinds of rich information and this cross-marketing, if you haven't done any, any of it, it unearths the most amazing things. And just because I'm a wine drinker, ebook reader, and a business traveler who also likes bourbon has nothing to do with it. There really are a lot of fascinating things that are very useful in this. So seek them out and ask all your good questions on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Thanks, Frank. Thank you.